What's up, everybody? Paddle Talk here once again. Uh, you guys can check out all of our content on the WSN YouTube channel um, with all of our other content being badass sand drag racing action. Don't forget you can watch Paddle Talk on Spotify as well. Don't forget to check out our Facebook, Instagram, and TikToks for a bunch of other cool content, sand drag racing action. Uh, you can also visit us at worldsanddragnews.com. Check out all of our records, our schedule past event photos and a bunch more and don't forget buy our sponsor stuff speaking of sponsors isaac take it away with an ad read all right hey folks this episode of paddle talk brought to you by racing in the dirt coming out of wisconsin scott and shane orogi and the crew up there your source for all kinds of good stuff they are real wheel dealers they are also scat track dealers uh, they can do cut tires, everything from ground-up chassis builds to all your supplies needed to get that car together in the last couple weeks here for racing season. Check them out on the internet, racingindedirt.com, on Facebook. You can find them or get a hold of them directly. Awesome. Thank you guys very much uh, for joining us again. Joined by Isaac and Damien uh, here on this episode of Paddle Talk. Some bad news starting out the week. Uh, Lake Elsinore's April Fuel Day event being canceled. They've got some weather coming on the, uh, the way. And the folks at SoCal Sandrags decided, hey, we can't really take the risk of, you know, one or more of the days being rained out. So they decided to pull the plug a little bit early. Uh, that just gives people here on the West Coast a little bit more time uh, to get prepped for Avenal um, opening day, which will be in May. Um, but we're going to be talking primarily about a really cool event. Um, Damien here is a, kind of our resident expert on this. Uh, it's the fastest of the fast um, event. Um, we talked about it a little bit with our April um, preview. Um, this is going to feature the Blown Alcohol Madness. They've got um, fast track uh, dirt drags as well as hill and hole stuff. Um, it's part of the Daryl jo Jones Memorial Race. Uh, Damien, tell us a little bit about some of the the classes and the format and stuff that they got going on there? Well, the main thing, the, the big class is their unlimited hill and hole class. Truck behind me, kind of the pioneer of that Daryl Jones's Scooby-Doo. If you were on YouTube in the mid-2000s, you saw this thing, wheeling, flipping, cartwheeling every hill and hole pit the guy could find, putting on a show with this crazy engine Ford Ranger. Um, but this class, they're running a 250-foot pit with two jumps throughout the pit. And generally, the last few years, the ballpark range has been in the low 4.0s. Daryl here, he holds the track record in the 360 range. There have been several cars run under the four-second, including Dennis Curley's – or the Curley's um, Snoot and Super Snoot, I believe, have both been under the three-second. One a nitrous Mopar. The others got a blown Hemi in it, I believe. Um, but the other classes – for the Hill and Hole Pit, Friday night, they're going to run a 39 and, or 38 inch and below and a 39 and above. So kind of old school mud classes, unaltered DOT. So you might see some of the bigger cars that run on Saturday running Friday night on a uncut street tire. So kind of hard to get moving there. Saturday, they're also going to have a hot street class, it looks like, in the pit. So something... And these guys are running an actual pit. And we'll put in some videos here of some of the cars not making it all the way through. And you'll see 35-inch to 40-inch tires just disappear at the end of the pit. Yeah, this is definitely not the, the more modern-style mud racing that we see a lot of places. This is true swallow-your-vehicle hole. And it, right. um, as far as this goes, Damien, um, it, I'm just looking at their flyer. It doesn't look like they have really any um, rules as far as the the Friday uh, classes with those those uncut DOT tires, it's just the tire size limits. Correct. As far as I know, because like I said, a lot of the times there's several guys that will run both days that will run, and they're limiting everyone to one class per day to try and keep the show moving because changing tires between classes kind of, kind of get to be a hassle because – but there's been a lot of guys throughout the years running 35 inch street tires on a car. It's got a nitrous injected big block in it. <laughs> it's got to be pretty wild to see some of those. And then that unlimited class on Saturday uh, looks like they got free entry for that. And they're doing payout uh, down five positions with a grand going to first. Oh yeah. That 
like I said, that is the namesake, the heart and soul of this track over the years. I've gone back as far as 2006 and some of the trucks that ran in 2006 still running today, including Scooby-Doo here. I believe someone in the Daryl Jones family was running it last year. I don't know if they're going to run it this year or not, but it'd be great to see. And it is truly unlimited. You'll see everything from blown and injected rails up to mega truck style combinations. And like I said, they're all aiming for sub four seconds in a 250 actually 250 foot bog pit and a lot of the cars are going to weigh north of 35 3800 pounds just due to all the extra chassis and suspension travel they get trying to lessen the impact of these jumps yeah that's that's what's wild i can i cannot imagine you know trying to go through that with both of those those hits there uh isaac is that something that you would even have entertained back in your your bronco days uh probably not a chance i did not have enough wheel travel i would like to point (laughs) out though that uh a past champion of that class lives less than five miles from my house right here in hamilton michigan so shout out to bill owen and his nitrous eating small block ford that beat all the blower cars one year down there Mm. oh yeah and it, that was just a couple of years ago here the car called unfiltered you can go on back channel productions he has been there the last several years covering the blown alcohol madness the gnarly nitro shootout and the fastest of the fast for them on his youtube channel and sort of, kind of like the old trucks and tractor power coverage and bill owen that day his first pass car wouldn't cooperate he just uh, basically running through the pit without the nitrous that second pass he took the win by just a few hundredths of a second over a blown dodge dakota lightweight tends to work in any motorsport well especially when you're talking mud though too i mean i I gotta imagine that your weight savings going through there like that's that's probably more so than just in sand drags oh totally and there's guys running anything from 700 cubic inch big blocks on nitrous screw screw blown hemis I've seen in the past. Um, there's no rule on tires, so you'll have Vera tracks. Some guys run paddles. The most common, obviously, the cut bogger. Yeah, the and you're talking the, the, un- the unlimited class, correct, Damien? Yes. Okay. And with that unlimited class, the only problem with the paddles is they take a set. You're kind of going that direction whether you want to or not. Yeah. And then. Very true. Just kind of the shift to the fast track. This event used to be part of the Pro Bad Series All-Star Nationals, which Gary Baker, after selling off the NMRO to the special events company, which runs the jam- ran the Jamborees for years, he started Pro Bad, which is Pro Blown Alcohol Dirt Dragsters. They had a few other classes, but that was their main selling point. 150 to 160 foot track. I don't know what the exact track length they're running currently is. But Friday night, they're going to have the cut tire class, which is anything glows, blower cars, nitrous cars. Um, We'll see cars like the Magician, 950-plus cubic inch Sunny Leonard nitrous motors against um, all sorts of different combinations. Our sponsors, Racing in the Dirt, they're taking a customer's Bronco, which they actually took up to the Keys Peak Hill Climb recently to kind of get it. Crazy to think they take that as their break-in pass for the new combination. <laughs> and they're taking it, it. It's an outlaw pro stock, very large fuel-injected nitrous motor. And it, it's going to be a crazy comp, but the cut tire is going to be the equalizer on that. Saturday, open blown alcohol madness, paddle tire class, only blower cars, free entry, $1,200 to the winner. Only rules it's got to have a blower and paddle tires. So that's a, that's a big open field there, and and because it is a fast track setup, I mean, realistically, we could see you know stuff that's closer to what we see on the sand run there without too much of an, an issue. Oh, totally. I, I would love to see some of our sand guys. I would love to see Farwicks go out there with their small block. They would be in the ballpark. I, it's hard to say whether they would outrun them or not, being that in the mud world, they build their cars to make two to four passes in a weekend on kill. Um, the night nightmare team out of Minnesota, 
that go, I don't know if they're going to be going, but they have gone in years past. They have, they run a screw blown Hemi. I don't know how big, but it's up there. And then they spray another 700 horse on top of it. You have the Paperboy Express team, blown Boss Hemi. Um, they have won the event in the past. Greg Monosmith out of Indiana here. He has won the event in the past with his all with his dragster as well. And most of the cars you'll see, rear engine, 150 inch wheelbase, cars that run the MRA open classes. And then they're also having the gnarly nitrous shootout, which is anything goes that is nitrous injected paddle tires. So again, if they were together, we're going here in a little bit, we'll be going over to an interview with Chris Galloway with the Valvoline G or Valvoline truck, sorry, getting cars mixed up there. But uh, he has ran there in the past with a nitrous injected small block Chevrolet based a lot of off of um, NASCAR combinations in the past. And then more recently off of what you'd see in the no prep and grudge racing world, as well as again, Keith Mitchell in the magician. He probably will try and make that trek. He has won that class in the past. Um, in the past, there's a guy named Robert Gallagher. He had a really short wheelbase altered with a 900 inch, Pat Musi built engine. Oh man! It's, yeah, they, these guys are serious when it comes to setting the fast time. No, oh, yeah, and I definitely think it's going to be one of those bigger engine nitrous combos. Essentially, it's basically what the MRA mod paddle class is, um, exactly. just with a, a little bit looser regulations with that. And then, um, right. I believe for that one as well, it's no entry fee. Um, they're doing a minimum payout. Now, they say that this can be on a, some sort of sliding scale depending on the turnout for it. But the minimum payout is that they're going to be uh, 500 for first, 200 for second, and 100 bucks for third. Um, we also failed to mention the Friday blower class, the cut tire class. That one's going to be a $100 entry, but the track is matching every entry fee on that. So it could be a pretty good payday for the Friday turnout as well. Oh, yeah, especially if you get a lot of the nitrous cars actually jumping into that class. You may also see in the past they've had some of the guys that run the hill and hole pit. Um, in the past, there was a team out of South Bend, Indiana, with a turbocharged four-cylinder Cummins and an old mud rail, and they would use that pass on Friday night in the cut tire class to try and test the combination out to run on Saturday for the hill and hole. And we were just talking about um, a past Sandra Gracer's vehicle that's probably going to be at this event. Um, one that Isaac knows uh, pretty well. Isaac, why don't you tell us about uh, the the truck that we we believe is going to be there. We don't have 100% certainty on it, but we're pretty sure it's going to be at this event. Absolutely. So uh, Gary Baker, Power Pro built a car that used to belong to Ryan Portiga, local racers from here in Michigan, not far from my house. Uh, part of the, back on, please. Sorry the about Porting that. Porting race team um, built, like I said, by Gary Baker out of the Power Pro chassis shop down in Urbana, Ohio. And yeah, that truck has been sold off, uh, went down to the North Carolina, kind of Virginia area. I believe popped back up at Newtown uh, first and now has been kind of making some appearances between uh, the Newtown track and again down um at this Daryl Jones race. So uh, be interested to see that truck down there. Still looks pretty good from the last time I saw it anyway. So, and uh, always was a pretty nice build. So. Yeah, definitely. It's going to have a slightly different configuration from its sand days, but it's, it's kind of cool that we see some, you know, trucks and obviously sand drags, we get a fair amount of X mud rails brought into the sand. So it's kind of cool seeing again, that cross pollination between, the two sides of the sport um definitely talk yeah. a little bit a little bit more about that um damien you mentioned that we had an interview with chris galloway uh chris was kind enough to be able to talk with us um about kind of his uh, involvement his family's involvement in the sport of mud racing um some of the sand events that they've been at let's go ahead and kick it over to that interview with chris right now and we'll see you guys back soon All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a very special guest with us today, Chris Galloway, coming all the way from North Carolina. Damian Bowers joining us here as well. Um, 
Chris is a big guy that's been in the mud realm for a long time. He dabbles in some sand drag stuff as well. Um, Chris, just tell us a little bit about kind of your journey, um, how you got involved in racing, you know, what your family's involvement's been, some of the vehicles you guys have, have put together and stuff. Well, it's definitely my dad, uh, you know, got everything started. Um, I was definitely fortunate to be able to go to a lot of races with him when I was younger. Um, but, but definitely dad started with, uh, you know, back in the early eighties where everybody else did with just a old square body Chevrolet and, you know, going lighter and faster. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, you've probably seen, uh, the, the old red slick 50 truck, uh, which was a long bed, um, you know, S 15, um, you know, they had a lot of fun with that truck, won a lot of races. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll have to get some pictures of that for you. Yeah, definitely. We'll throw Actually, I'm on the guys' them. Facebook page right now going through some of this old stuff. <laughs> you guys yeah. definitely have a lot of cool vehicles you guys have worked on over the years, including your own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Dad, he built, uh, like I said, a lot of trucks for a lot of customers as well. Um you know, my grandfather, Lester, you know, what started the shop, uh, Galloway's four wheel drive, obviously, um, he did sponsor a lot of trucks too, you know, helped a lot of people out with, uh, you know, super swamper tires and, and, uh, things like that. There was always, always late nights, you know, had a lot of different mud trucks at the shop, um, you know, through the week getting ready for the big weekend. So, you know, that was always a big thing. Um, they raced at a uh, Concord motor speedway. Uh, the two two hundred fifty foot long mud pit there, which oh, wow. was always uh you know just a soupy mud hole. I mean, it was yeah you know, back when they were swallowed. real mud tracks. Yeah, <laughs> that was mud racing back then. Where when they swallowed forty fours, you know that's a hole. But uh, back when you it wasn't how fast it was how far. Yes, exactly, and that was the whole deal. You know, there wasn't but you know two three trucks that would make it through and um you know back then you know you're talking about a wide range of uh, uh timeline there but when say they started getting fast kind of uh when the the big truck the valvoline truck that you see the big bodied one whenever oh, well. he went yeah whenever he went to a uh a really small transfer case uh I'll give it out a little secret here. It's an international travel all uh, chain drive with a quiet chain in it. Hmm. Went from went from uh, you know the big Dana sixty down to a a real lightweight nine inch Ford and and down to That's... a Dana forty four from the sixty that everybody ran. You know he he basically in one season dropped a thousand pounds and it was it was just wild. Obviously I wasn't born yet, but all the videos and stuff. I mean he literally put. Uh, a second on the field and it was well, wild um you know well, when you look up, the trucks and tractor power he was on with the old night yeah <laughs> yeah um and it was always a small block so it was it was always usually the lightest combination out there and it didn't look it that's the thing you know you see this big old full body looking truck you know it just looks like everybody else's but until you start crawling under it and see wait there's nothing in there <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. and uh but yeah, he ran that truck um, through those old days at um, Concord and to a lot of places down south. Um, and then eventually when NMRO started up, he was uh, number 210 in the NMRO and uh, won the, let's see, 1990 uh, Pro Stock Championship with that truck, um, 91, 92. Um, you know, with that truck and, and practically the same combination all the way through, um, was just ahead of its time basically, but a uh, small block Chevrolet, you know, 18 degree, uh, old NASCAR stuff from the, from the early eighties, you know, uh, <laughs> they like, they like nitrous, you know, Apparently. And, uh, <laughs> you know, back, back in them days in uh pro stock, you know, in MRO, you could run nitrous and, uh, you know, that thing was hot. I mean, um, a lot of cool videos that we have on VHS. 
Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff from the NMRO. Um, I'm sure you've seen some of the, the history, well, history of mud racing's page also, but, mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm trying to think, yeah, I have to get some of those for you, but yeah, for sure. But yeah. A lot of cool, a lot of cool races and stuff. Do you know how much that uh, your dad was spraying back then through that small block? So that was a, in that particular one there, that was a 383 combination and it would be about a 325 plate system is all it was. Um, but it was back just, then, radical, that was just yeah. radical quick, you know, you go to dry fire and it's just eight grand instantly, just a tap, you know, and it's just crazy how it stayed together. Um, but you know, um, you know, Carilla rods and, uh, you know, Jay Pistons and stuff, you know, played a part in that. They just had good, you know, NASCAR didn't use any junk, you know? Wow. And, uh, <laughs> so crazy to think you're getting the used stuff and it's still good. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it was just a 509 block that would just get welded up on a regular basis. I mean, it was pretty neat. Uh, you know, it's a two bolt main deal that uh, dad basically made a, a big cradle, you know, that goes over all the main caps and mm -hmm. held that thing together. <laughs> so it turned, <laughs> it turned, it turned 85 a lot. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So obviously going from, from that truck, where, you know, where did you kind of come in the picture where you started, you know, getting to the age where you're kind of helping a little bit more with the shop and doing some racing yourself? So if you go back to like 2001, um, when we went to gravel Rama with both trucks, um, I was 13. So that's when I kind of really started more hands-on rather than just kind of hanging out, you know, I guess you'd say, mm -hmm. um, we worked for basically, you know, a couple nights in a row to get the little truck done. All right, to get it ready for the the big gravel rama, <laughs> and drove to South Carolina to Bill Blackwell's, uh, great friends of ours, um, Will and Ben Blackwell, Donna Blackwell, great family down there. Um, we went to their house. Uh, Bill Blackwell's actually put his big block five forty, uh, in the truck for that race. Oh, and they literally worked all night. Um to get that truck ready, get it finalized. Um, and so left out from there, we had to take off, uh, so that we could, uh, basically make the uphill drags. Um, so we took off that they weren't ready yet. We took off, got up there, got parked over there by TG short, um, and Blaine Kilby. And if you remember Houston Kilby with the, the little junior dragster, I, that was one of the uh, first we, years I actually raced in the Pee Wees. I remember that thing and that fancy yep. aluminum wing they had on that. Well, thing I'll have to dig wild. that picture up of that thing for you. It was Blaine, wild. Yep. I've got some I've awesome got a lot of uh, metal DHS. there that weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, that was an awesome weekend for sure. Uh, so they ended up, um, like I said, after the, the day of the uphill drags, uh, Bill and them showed up with the big truck. Um, I think dad ended up winning the hundred foot uphill drags in XB at, uh, gravel Rama and then won the eliminator hill, uh, with a little truck didn't do so well at the 300 foot drags. Um, you know, of course a little more set up for short, you know, short runs and, and geared sure. more for that. that um, but awesome. Oh yeah, just <laughs> a lot of different combinations. But then uh, I've got a really, really cool video and story to go with it. But uh, with the big truck um, pulling up on the Eliminator Hill, and I don't know if you remember that, Damien, but uh, pulled up on the hill, and um, that one had about a probably a four hundred shot on that big block, and went up there on the side of the hill, and that thing burped, spit back. And uh, all it had for air cleaner was uh, the metal screen with the outerwear oh, uh, around it for the filter. And it burnt that filter all the way down. And oh my gosh. Uh, so, yeah, so he never left the line, but uh, basically he kind of rolled back a little bit and uh, they were kind of motioning him over, you know, you know, you're, you're out basically. 
and uh, they're pointing him back down the hill and, you know, back over to the staging area. And so you see him backing up the hill and, and the crowd at that point, you know, was probably around, I don't know, what would you say, Damon, seven, 800 people maybe? Oh, back then it was in thousands because back then you still had to set up the day before just to have a place to stand. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The crowd on the hill that day, it was wild, but uh, it was just amazing. He, he was backing up the hill and, and uh, all the people were, whoa, no, no. And uh, everybody was pointing up at the hill, um, you know, uh, let him get a chance, right? And uh, so they finally motioned him over to go up the hill. He goes straight up and over and uh, ends up winning the event. So both <laughs> trucks won the Eliminator Hill that day. It was awesome. It hey, was there good. you go. Getting the crowd on your side helped out oh, a little bit that, there. That's it something that's about your guys, you guys. You, as it stands, your trucks are, both of them, I think, are undefeated on the hill so far. So far, both trucks, every time they've ever been there for a Gravel Rama event, have won. Yep, on the Eliminator Hill. Yep. Yeah, for those those that have not been to Gravel Rama, tell us a little bit about like your first time, you know, seeing the Eliminator Hill. Like it, it, yeah. it it's in person. I think is it's a little bit more daunting than it looks like in pictures. It hits a lot. Yeah, different. for sure. You get up. Uh, <laughs> You get ride just riding up there on the four wheeler, you know, taking a look at it. It's like, man, you know, this thing is pretty big, you know. And you go walking out there, that pea gravel is just a, a different, you know. Obviously, we don't have that around here, uh, where I'm from. But uh, you get up there on that pea gravel, and it's it's something else. The way it just comes right out from under you, you know. <laughs> but the hill is definitely uh, something else. I mean, um, I recommend everyone tries it once. For sure. In the seat, driving up to it, um, I guess everyone oh. would have a little different story, but it, it was a little different for me. I grew up riding anything with handlebars or steering wheel, you know, so it was a little different for me. I thought it was, I thought it was great. Um, you know, I felt comfortable, um, but like I said, it was great fun. Just, it was awesome. I recommend it 10 out of 10 for sure. Anybody <laughs> get us a chance. Definitely. Totally. So, and then I think the last time you guys were out there, grab rama was for 51. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That was 20, yeah. 2022. So, so basically from 2001 and to, you know, 2020, that would have been 2021, right? 22. We had to skip a year. Gravel yeah, that's right. right. So we were ready for the one before, and then they canceled that. So yeah, so uh, that would have been the the last year we've uh, you know been able to go. Um, but yeah, that's when I was able to drive, obviously. Yeah. But um, you know, we went uh with little. You know, we went with the game plan of instead of going and putting, you know, we were obviously going there to go make 50 passes, it seems like, you know. <laughs> so we're like, okay, we're going to go and leave all the nitrous bottles at home. We're going to try and tune this thing up and just, you know, go make laps, go have fun with it. Exactly. And uh, that was not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, we definitely that. left. We definitely left uh, the kitchen sink at home and shouldn't have, but uh, we needed, uh, obviously needed gear and, and uh, and two more converters. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we had fun though. Yeah. And I think you, you made it to the final four in the bracket at uh, the flat drags, correct? Yeah, we, we did. There was a, there was a lot of cars in that. I think I lucked up really. <laughs> hey, some, was, sometimes hey. you gotta have a little bit of luck on your side and you still, yeah. you, you still took the, the big limiter hill um, at that event too. So yeah, overall a pretty good weekend. Oh, we had a ball. I mean, I had a lot of fun just, you know, making laps and, you know, just meeting so many new people. Um, a lot of those guys, you know, dad raced with uh, years back and, and I was able to meet them. Super cool uh, group of people. I mean, like I said, you couldn't ask for any better. Um, but to be able to race, man, we didn't get done till like, what was it, one thirty in the morning? 
<laughs> I mean, it was, yeah. it, it it's was crazy pretty because neat. the sport you come from, it's all about you get one, maybe two licks at the track, right. fastest right. wins. We're running 100, 110 cars at Rama <laughs> through the bracket race, <laughs> and you have to work your way down through the rounds. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So speaking of, speaking of that, just like tell us a little bit about like the differences that you see. You know, you talked a little bit about you know gear changes and stuff with it, but what what other things do you see that's kind of like the big factors that go into the difference between running those shorter distances in mud and the three hundred foot you know sand drags? Well, I didn't really get the data, I guess, that I would need to answer that question because I've always ran nitrous. We've always been you know, prepared to run basically pro mod class, class four. So that was the first time I'd ever ran the truck without nitrous. So like I said, I went totally unprepared. So I know there's, a, I believe, significant gearing uh, and converter change to to move over. But um, like I said, uh, we just uh, went with a totally different game plan and um, but yeah, the way the, the way that material stays, um, and it actually hooks a lot harder than you would think, I guess, in my opinion, it's, it's just different, you know, like anything else you got to tune for it, <laughs> but for oh, sure. Totally. No, and it's, and it's tough when you're going and, 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 you know, people don't really think about this. It's like, Oh, well, you're still running the same combo but without the nitrous. It's, it is a big difference. The oh. car reacts totally differently yes. when it's on spray. Yeah, just dropping a cylinder right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yep. I mean, yeah. I, I know that feeling nowadays with our combo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other other than that, Chris, tell us like so that extra, you know, hundred foot, you know, a lot of like the dirt and mud tracks are up to two hundred foot. It what's the big difference like there? Obviously, you know, with it not being on the spray, does does that extra length really feel all that much? longer to you or do you kind of feel like you know you're already you know it's you're already going so quick that last hundred foot yeah that oh it doesn't I, really feel different oh i loved it i mean the truck uh the truck drives and handles so good i mean i'm sure most everybody's car is in a four-wheel drive you know it, it's you basically can put your hands in your lap i mean you know it, it's just uh really a walk in the park but then like i said we took you know, a good bit of power away, not running nitrous. But, uh, I mean, our car, our, our truck didn't actually start pulling until about half track anyways, you know. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, we were just way off on uh, on setup. But but if we were, if we weren't prepared, uh, I feel like it's, it would just be uh, just an absolute good time, you know, especially doing something different. I, I all the different full drive events that we do from back to back truck pulling to doing sled pulling to, you know, different things. Uh, you know, a challenge like that is always, it's always awesome. So. Yeah, definitely. absolutely. I mean, we definitely want to see more of the mud world cross over into that. And I think gravel Rama is a really cool event too, for, for a lot of those people to kind of come out because you're still racing, you know, um, a lot of four wheel drive cars. It's a different surface. Um, you know, it's, I would say it's closer to some of the mud tracks and stuff a little bit. I don't know, Damien, what, what, what do you think on that? Just because we've got for such a bogging, wide variety of surfaces. World, for the bogging world, when it's really wet, yeah, it's a lot like launching on wet concrete. Yeah. For, and any more the fast track world where you guys run the truck nowadays because the truck was originally designed to run actual mud pits back then. Not the yeah. deepest, but still, you guys were running 200 foot and a foot deep of actual soupy mud. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays, you guys are running the fast track stuff, and it's all it's really loose, loamy, about six, eight inches deep, almost yep. like our group for our racers, would compare it to Brookville, Saboba, um, was Lake Elsinore, Thunder Valley. It's that really loose, soft dirt clay mix. Yeah. The MRA, those guys, uh, it's amazing what they can do just from their experience on, 
um, putting together a starting line. It's crazy um, how nice they are and how comparable they are from track to track and making them consistent. Obviously, the dirt's different everywhere they go, but, you know, they can put um, put a start line together like you wouldn't believe. Um, I mean, I mean, we've basically stood it up multiple times, you know, um, yep. totally not expecting it. But uh, there's one YouTube video out there, you know, hurts to watch it but uh Cobbtown <laughs> Georgia um we stood it up and went and tore the truck up down there that was a long ride home mm. but uh yeah I'm telling you there's a lot of we've got a, a lot good of video guys. of you in uh South Carolina the first race that you had after you put the truck back together um right in 2020 <laughs> that was a good you know indication of the, that track prep and not tearing up the truck. <laughs> right. That track was amazing. Uh, Danny Shepard put that together. Um, I mean, that was just an amazing start line. And they're so wide. I mean, you could run 20 cars and everyone have a fresh lane. It's so crazy how they do it. Um, you know, really neat. Um, but like I said, it's, it's really, really similar to Gravel Rama as far as the consistency of like the teal, you know, if you're talking about comparing that um, as far down as it's tilled and with the moisture um, it's, you know, the same, but different at the same time, you know, but, uh, but yeah, like I said, when, when we were down there um, in South Carolina, I mean, that was, that was, pretty spectacular just because in 2020 that whole year i was basically finalizing and and putting the truck together um now how long path, out the I, back at that point what's that now how long had you guys been out of racing at that point from the last time you'd ran the truck uh so i let's see here man i'm about to go back and look at pictures um so <laughs> i actually burnt the motor at that track i had a fuel solenoid that didn't open and leaned out one whole side Ooh. um and tore up the 415 and that was with a lot of juice that was two stages uh one nos hardline kit uh 400 worth and and another 250 shot with a speed tech softline kit <laughs> um so oh, a lot yeah. going through that 18 degree motor um but it loved it man it loved it um but yeah that was in south carolina um around 2009 so the truck had set since 2009 um trying to get a motor game plan together and you know ended up from there basically just gathering parts like you know you can't just put the same truck back together if you're going down taking it down this far you know you gotta <laughs> you gotta come back better right so oh, basically yeah. from 2009 to 2019 i've been gathering stuff changes we were going to make um you know a lot of different things in our drive line is different um things like that um, so we talked to Blaine Kilby, obviously, that uh, built the chassis, you know, back in 92. Um, he recommended that we put another bar, you know, around uh, the cage, around the helmet. Um, just because, well, you see in that picture behind you there, um, behind the uh, B-pillar, there's no uh, second bar or in between. Mm. Um, Which back then. Do what? That was the norm, and a lot of yeah. promotion yep. like, series right. have started requiring that helmet bar on a funny car style cage. Yep, and so that was kind of one of the first things we needed to do to kind of get it up, get the chassis updated as well. Um, you know, so I took the frame, or all the way down to the frame, started with that, did that over at my uh, buddy's shop. Um got that put in a uh, couple little changes here and there as far as brackets and whatnot, but um, got it. Re Actually it was painted in 92. It was never powder coated. Oh, wow. So we've got a buddy in uh, Mooresville uh, that does an amazing job. CRC powder coating in Mooresville. Um, but he did it 
RDO one, um, you know, did a great job on that. And we started putting it back together. And like I said, in time for that race in September and that pass you saw was the off the trailer. Oh, pack. wow. <laughs> there was no, there was no backyard run. There was no nothing. Uh, at that point, that was the first dry fire. And if you see in the video, the, the flames and the spit back through the carburetor real quick, that was the pushing the air out <laughs> in the <laughs> fuel lines. You, you got to see the very first hit. So quick dry fire there pulled up and just, you know, let go of it and pedaled it one good time and kept it down. But we had a hard veer to the right and, uh, yeah, it was a it was a path for sure. It's definitely one of those things where you're you're going right and like, okay, wh- how far right am I gonna go? And and yeah. where is the other guy in the other lane? Yeah, yep. Um, definitely coming back strong, representing in the modified class. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yep. It was it was a good time. Uh, I kind of tried to hold off because I would I didn't know which direction obviously it was gonna go. Um, you know. I felt good about it, but I was still wondering, and I kind of wanted to let, uh, it was actually John King, uh, their car, and his daughter was driving, and uh, I was like, yeah, go ahead and take off, because I don't know where this thing's going, so (laughs) if you notice, I didn't actually hit the tree at all, I just... (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, and that, and that actually makes that makes a lot more sense. First, first pass off, they go, "Hey, just this, take yeah. it easy." <laughs> that was off the scales and in the trailer. <laughs> wow, definitely so, looked like a fun ride. That's for and sure. What, what it, combo is in it now, uh, Chris? Okay, so this is a same rear end. Obviously, uh, front end is a Suzuki J10 front axle um let's see here everything else is kind of the same power glide transmission um we still run the international um travel all transfer case um and then so a good friend of ours um barry Krim, actually built a transfer case for us uh, dad had some ideas and and uh, drawings and and they put it together and built an amazing transfer case to go in it. We didn't have it at that race in 2020, but uh, that's what we have now. Uh, okay. It was actually in it at Gravel Rama, but a super neat custom transfer case. But uh, the engine is a 414 uh, dark aluminum block. Um, uh, it's actually an 11 degree Little Chief dart head. Is what it's based off of um so you know not a good nitrous motor <laughs> definitely <laughs> 30... on the fall end for nitrous motors in your sport too yeah yeah uh so 39 <laughs> and a half cc chamber and uh you know huge valves it just not a good combination for nitrous but we tried to make it work and it lived for about 15 passes but yeah. <laughs> but yeah um yeah, we've had a lot of fun with it. Um, definitely had a lot of fun with it. Uh, like I said, I'm, that's what I've been working on here lately is trying to get that motor back together. That's where I just came from is yeah, over at my buddy's boring. shop. Or and it's tough the too because you're, you're doing that and, you know, you're obviously supporting your customers and stuff. Um, obviously, this, uh, this upcoming, uh, what will be when this drops the next weekend, um, you've got customers that, you know, you've got trucks that they're going to the fastest of the fast, um, event. Um, obviously that, that going to be the last event, uh, that they run of that, um, kind of in, in Daryl's memory. Um, tell us a little bit about the customers you got going there, kind of your relationship, what you knew of Daryl, you know, um, and what, what you're looking forward to seeing from that. event. Yeah. Yeah. Daryl Jones put on a heck of an event. That's for sure. Um, we've been going, I guess. And if we weren't running, you know, we would just go to watch. Um, it's about two hours away from us, you know, over in Sanford, North Carolina. Uh, but, um, you know, he always had a, a really neat layout, uh, that was great for spectators and the racers. Uh, just the parking, the way everything was laid out, uh, just a really cool event. There was a great guy. He was all about the show. 
um, you know, Showed with his, <laughs> yeah, with his rear engine, uh, you know, blown Ford Ranger hill and hold truck. I'm um, sure you've seen the videos of that thing, but it, everything we'll he brought sure out there was just wild, you know. But uh, it's great event. Uh, I'm glad they've kept it going. Uh, you know, since he had passed, um, I I really hope they change their mind and and keep it going. There's a lot of people that really look forward to that race every year. Um, so especially you know, one of them I'll, I'll say you know Cole Hudson with the Moonshine Express truck. You know, he's always uh, supported him up there. Uh, Mark Creech. And Dylan Creech with the uh, Red Snake with the little Toyota pickup, uh, you know, definitely those guys are going to go and and put on a show for sure. Definitely the the Hill and Hold, I believe they've got a Leaf Spring class, and then they're uh, the fastest of the fast class. Daryl Jones with a still holds, I believe, the track and the Hill and Hold. It's kind of sanitized record so 250 foot pit with two hills yeah. on it in the three he he covered the hill and hole pit in 3.64 3.67 or something like that seconds with that old yeah. board range yeah there's uh <laughs> there's been a lot of been a lot of trucks that's right at it and there's some that's went faster but the the pit has changed a little bit you know it's kind of hard to have a record when you know the pit you know really has a lot of differences you know from one year to another but it evolves so much even just throughout the day yeah for sure and you know anything anything close to three seconds on that hill and hole pit is getting it i mean there's been a lot of people travel from a long ways uh that have done well on it also but usually usually uh you know it's the, usually someone from the Carolinas, you know, whether it be the Curleys, uh, the Superman. Them, I mean, you know, <laughs> them two, that both their trucks that they got now, and them are another family that's got a le- long history in mud racing. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Those guys have been racing since the eighties. You know, they were racing back then when uh, Dad was racing. Also, I mean, uh, racing a long time. They've got a lot of passes under their belt. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. And then not to mention that you guys also in the, the past couple of years, you guys have ran a time or two there with the night shift in their outlaw nitrous shootout and then their open paddle class for the blown alcohol madness. Yep. Yeah. Um, I've never, I've never actually done really well there. Um, there is one YouTube video we went and we were actually just testing one day. This was a long time ago before they actually introduced the nitrous class to that race. We just mm-hmm. went up there uh, because uh, I had spoke to Daryl and, and told him, I was like, Hey, uh, you know, y'all are pretty close to the house. Would you mind if we come make a couple hits? He said, <laughs> absolutely not. Bring it down. You know? And uh, he was all about it. He let us make a couple passes in between the uh, blower class and all. And actually uh, at the time, uh, we put a, a pass down there just, you know, practicing, uh, that was actually under the record for, uh, paddles and, uh, and modified, you know, with that same, oh, wow. you know, small block. So, yeah, that's super impressive. For, yeah. But it was a good time. Yeah. Like I said, Daryl was always, he was all about it. <laughs> that's for sure. Even when, cause he was also known with the Scooby-Doo truck that, that truck became fam- made him famous on YouTube when yeah. I was it, back in the early two back in the mid two thousands, and he would go out to different races and he would run with the big open paddle cars on fast tracks, and he'd have a different body for every race he'd go to, different paint yeah. job. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it was a neat it was a neat combination. That's for sure. You know, heavy truck, but a lot of power. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Yeah. 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 It's 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 definitely gonna suck seeing it, you know, go away and stuff. You know, um, like you said, hope hopefully they change their mind on that. You know, I I would imagine that this being the final one, that there's gonna be a pretty big crowd. So maybe maybe they maybe they see the support with that. Um, yeah. And you know, change your mind if you guys are around the Carolinas area, head on out there. 
I think and, we uh, lost him. Oh no. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it real quick here. So yeah, just hoping that you know they can con continue that. That they sh show a lot of support there. Um, and yeah, if you guys are around the area of where that event's gonna be, uh, definitely show up. Um, I, I think it's gonna be a cool time. Um, I, and obviously, Chris, you're gonna, you know your customers are going there. Are you going there as well to to just to spectate? I'm definitely gonna try and be there for Saturday. Um, they're running the Red Snake Truck Friday night. Uh, it's DOTs. That's mm -hmm. gonna be something I I, I really want to be there for that. But like I said, it's about a two hour drive. So and you gotta um, get up first. <laughs> yeah, I've gotta be at work. Gotta be at work Saturday morning, and then I'm gonna try and take off early and be there for uh, you know open run uh, for Saturday. Um, and they'll be running the open class in that. But that's a super neat truck. Look out for that one. Uh, the Red Snake. Um, it's a red Toyota pickup. It's a two JZ, one single turbo, and oh. still has oh, factory okay. factory Toyota axles. Wow, cut thirty cut thirty eight boggers. That's good. <laughs> that's actually that's a pretty cool combo there. If he, if he can keep it up on boost, he's got a runner there. Yeah, yeah. it is neat. One, in our sport, we have an our A Pro modified world record holder out of Puerto Rico runs a two jz and they've been in the 280s and 300 feet with that they're wild yep this is more <laughs> of a this is more of a conservative uh i, I don't want to throw any numbers out there but he, he's he's definitely i'd say he's probably somewhere in the 600 650 range on power but uh Not you know correct. something that you can go Enough. race you can something you can go race for you know the whole season and not worry about hurting anything Oh yeah, those things. Those, I mean, like just. I, I'm sure that the one that Damien's talking about, that's a complete full bill. Yeah, oh, yeah. Bill, oh, but bill uh, the time. stock ones, those yeah. things are bulletproof motors. They really they're, like, and they can handle quite a lot of boost stock. They're known to make thirteen, fourteen hundred with the stock bottom end. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh yeah, they're wild. Um, so at a uh, Twitty City, um, I don't know if y'all have seen any of the races from uh. Russell Twitty in Ulmer, South Carolina. Um, Real so, standing blaster. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So they were there with the Red Snake uh, when they just brought it back out with that motor combo and were ended up, I think, from all classes, second fastest on the field um, oh for wow. the big U track. And uh, that thing. A bunch it, of really big name mega trucks at that event. Oh, yeah. Yep. They they draw a huge crowd. It's an awesome event. Well, now, that'd be super just, cool. Just for kind of a game, just for kind of get some ideas here for like the uh, outlaw or sorry, the out blown alcohol madness, the open nitrous, and the fast the fast classes. Is there any ones you're looking to see that might actually take the top spot in those three? Um, man, it is anybody's game. When you go to, uh, you know, say an MRA event where a lot of those blower cars are uh, or the modified cars, it, it's crazy how fast they're going now. Um, Keith Mitchell um, in The Magician with the rear engine nitrous car. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nine, that car is going to be sub. It's going to be sub two seconds. Um Three or four blown cars there will be, you know, sub two seconds. I mean, it's going to be an amazing show. You don't want to miss it. Totally. Every year, Nick Davis with Back Channel Productions, these last few years have been putting together yep. some awesome videos for us to be able to see some of these races that go on. Oh, yeah. He does a great job. He does. I hope uh, I hope he can be there. And, and like I said, everybody can be there to support um it's definitely going to be a great show there's so many different classes from entry level all the way up and uh, like i said there's a ton of people that go there that started there you know that's where they uh got into mud racing and uh you know just you see how far they've uh they've come but um like i said they've got concessions there um parking is always good as long as it doesn't rain the whole day before uh but it's it's you park right there close grandstands is under shelter if it does rain a little bit so 
you know, it's pretty neat setup that uh, that she has up there. So, yes, very cool. Her and Daryl put a lot of time and a lot of effort to build a wonderful facility for the sport to utilize. And like you, like you've said, like Caleb said, hopefully they'll be willing to let someone come along and carry the torch that'll carry that right that event or at least that venue into the future. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Speaking of future. Chris, what what do you got planned? What's like in the store for the Galloway team? Both stuff that you guys are doing with uh, the truck. You said you're trying to get that back together. Um, other builds you got going on? Spot, you know, people you're sponsoring. Well, for our truck, um, you know, I'm basically just trying to get it back together. Um, we were doing a little run at Stanley County Fairgrounds. Uh, we started doing some flat drag races there um uh carolina grudge is putting those on um so we run run let's see two races there and then this last one uh we went and i actually pulled up to the line i'll tell you what happened but i pulled up to the line and did a quick little dry fire and developed a tick pretty Mm. hard tick and i'm like oh that's not good i went ahead and cut it off we drug it back to the trailer Looked all over it, couldn't find anything wrong. Um, but uh, got it back to the, the uh, house, got it tore down and everything, and found that we had raised a couple ringlands. And Ooh. yeah, so laid the top of the piston over just a hair, just enough for the uh, intake valve to touch. Well, so, at least it before you sent it. Uh, right. Yeah, that right. would have been that would have been expensive. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah. Um, so been a couple valves um wrecked a few pistons but good news is is uh we just just honed the uh number one cylinder out to 4180 so uh it's gonna hold it looks like (laughs) been there done (laughs) yeah yeah we're gonna try and get it put back together um might make a couple changes um but uh nothing nothing crazy um, obviously, you know, we can't go keep up with those guys that are running the MRA series. Those guys are flat out getting it. It's nuts. Crazy when the class you're in, your engine is half the size of 50 <laughs> of the field. It's and you're it, entered the magician. They run a Sonny Leonard 950 plus cubic inch Hemi, basically. Yeah, it is wild. It really is. Just to be able to run with those guys you know it, it's an honor they've they've come so far i mean oh, um, totally. yeah like i say we're just some part-timers you know um you know we try and try and run when we can so any races you're wanting to hit this year well we really really wanted to be at this race uh in sanford um for the fastest of the fast that was oh. our goal for last year and uh between waiting on parts um and then this setback here you know just definitely not gonna be able to make it uh bummed about that but uh we're gonna try and shoot for uh hitting a couple or maybe at least one mra race um later in the year really like to go to panama city florida uh for the Mm. season opener but i don't see it happening valves right now uh (laughs) taking a really long time um and so are pistons so that is that is the common uh, trend we've heard with a lot of people it's just you know you're at the mercy of the park gods on when they can when they can ship stuff out right now stuff coming into the country is kind of deadheaded up there in uh boston right yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah good thing we don't we don't good thing we don't need anything from up there that's for sure there's gonna be some setbacks but uh yeah like say hopefully um hopefully we can hit a couple this year like say it might end up being towards the end of the year but we're not done (laughs) come up here for uh, either gravel or the outlaws finale in september we got the gravel rama and then a few weekends later they got the race in brookville there's also um your truck might fit into it is that texas mud outlaw series that's traveling they're running obviously texas mississippi missouri and then they're coming up into kentucky in september that's right that would be neat don't forget um if you want to make the haul to to michigan 
I think there'd be a lot of people would be happy to see that truck run in the, the pro truck class. It run okay. pro truck, definitely. But that's an index class. Yeah. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, with your truck narrow, you don't fit in the pro truck elite. Got to okay. have an offset driver's position for that. But that'd yep. be a cool class that um, I would love to see more of the outlaw pro stock world try and make because up there in Michigan with Rich Simon's pro truck series at the Silverback Off-Roads Raceway, they brought up in their pro truck elite class. It's 140-inch wheelbase limit, full body, hood, front fenders, and grill, and standard driver's position. Other than that, it's anybody's ball game. Last year, it was won by a twin turbo big block Chevy going against a roots blown big block Chevy in a Jeep. Hmm. Man, yeah, I haven't seen any of their rules, uh, but yeah, I'd have to take a look at that and see see how they do it. Definitely be a be cool. great fit for your truck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have to check into that. Getting the gears get turning there. Yeah, <laughs> who knows? Maybe some, we might get some mud racers listening to hear Chris talk about his family's little bit of history in the sport and some of the upcoming stuff, and we might get some other people's gears turning yeah yeah there's yeah. a lot of outlaw pro stock trucks there is i mean that's that a, is a wonderful class to watch that just keeps yeah growing. it's neat yeah Especially it's neat open the class up to more combinations right mm-hmm. yeah well and... hopefully we could see it some of those um we may um try we're, we're, we're looking at maybe trying to make some mra events ourselves um so we may see it that uh chris especially uh-huh. if it's later in the season um but it's been great talking with you, Chris, uh, hearing your story and, and that cool, you know, another one of those racers that, where mud meets sand, that crossover happens. It's, it's and, always cool hearing how yeah. that works. Yeah, like I said, yeah, dad was, uh, he was all about anything on dirt. Um, so, <laughs> like I said, basically, I, I learned everything from him, you know, <laughs> Um but yeah, he did a lot of a lot of racing from motocross to, you know, um, obviously, you know, years and years of mud racing, you know, winning uh, six championships in the NMRO. Oh wow, yeah, I didn't realize count- he won. Yeah, countless races, you know, but uh, before that, but yeah, like I said, he he's he definitely done a lot of racing. We had a lot of fun. So totally, yeah, more to come for that too. Exactly. Hopefully. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. All> right. <laughs> I work from your night shift. <laughs> <laughs> well, mm-hmm. again, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to go kick it over uh, to the rest of the podcast. And uh, again, can't thank you enough for joining us. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Good to hear from you. Uh, yeah. Keep in touch. Totally. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, great interview there with Chris Galloway. Really appreciate him being willing to give up some time and talk to us uh, about that great family history there. And uh, really impressive how those guys have been really in some really different racing uh, over the years. And every place they've been, one constant, they've always found a way to do really, really well. So thanks again to Chris uh, for taking his time to talk with us here at WSDN. And we appreciate his time. Uh, Rolling back into that, today's episode brought to you by Racing in the Dirt. Cleveland, Wisconsin, from full-on race builds all the way to all the parts needed to finish off your build just in time for this season. See Scott, Shane, and the rest of the crew Racing in the Dirt. Uh, Find them on Facebook at RacingInTheDirt.com. Or you can also call them and get a hold of them directly as well. So shout out to them for today's sponsor. Awesome. Thank you very much again, Isaac, there. Um, we're going to talk about another event that's actually coming here um, in April that we neglected to mention uh, in our little monthly preview. Um, this is going to be kind of a little bit different than what we typically focus on. It's a hill climb event. They do some side-by-side drag racing. They also do like an over-the-top hill with uh, three different stair steps. Um, this is a track in Monson, Massachusetts. And uh, Damien was uh, kind of just browsing around, found uh, that they've got this event coming up. It's going to be taking place April 21st, um, that Sunday. And uh, 
Damien, tell us about some of the wild stuff we've seen at that event. It's been such a crazy event. I've seen it for years, known about it for years, never really known exactly when it takes place. It's an easy one to find. You can look it up. Monson, Massachusetts Hill Climb, Monson Monster is what they call a hill. They also do AMA motor motorcycle hill climbs at the track throughout the year. But this event this weekend, you're going to see everything from your basic Ultra 4, stock trucks, hill obstacle course racers, up to quite a variant type of field, to such as rails, Jeeps with big inch nitrous motors, old, lots of old mud style cars, because that hill drag track's kind of narrow. The stability's at a premium. And everything from blower cars to nitrous cars that ran there, mega trucks, the hill climb is quite a wild trip. It looks like it's just the lower part for the hill drags. Looks like it's a 200 foot plus hill. Oh, easy, I think. And I mean, like, yeah. just like we see a gravel Rama, you know, it's one of those things where you've got to be careful about how long you stay in it because. If you stay in it too long, you're you're flying over that finish line and over that crest, and uh, they don't have a ton of uh, room on the back end there, so you definitely have to be on the brakes before the finish line. Um, and definitely the traction is a premium there. I mean, we'll have to throw up some videos here, right in here, uh, kind of showing some of the, the wild passes that we've seen um, from some of those past events. People getting sideways, and, you know, I will say – those track operators there, they got some cojones standing at the top of that hill. I've seen a couple of them where it looked like <laughs> got a little sketchy there. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, definitely. One of my favorite cars I've seen from the past several years there. They've got a guy that runs an old shit looks like an old Chevy wagon called old number seven on the side of it. It says Chicopee Farm Auto Farms. And he runs some crazy nitrous combo in that thing bigger diggers on the back and it sets up like an old four-wheel drive truck like you'd see at the car jamborees and such in a car show more than it looks like a race car and it flies definitely they got some wild machines it is now, like crazy in the com hopefully this coming weekend i'm looking to get a hold of their tech guy for the event so we can get him in for an interview for next week so we can give you a little more insight into the event the way they run the races, the way they decide what they're doing with the top of the hill, because I've seen it where they'll do the standard hill drags and it'll be a single stair step and then a str almost straight up looking hill from the videos, or they'll add an extra stair step in that second part of the hill. Also try and get some information on the classes they run. I, I know they've got a few different classes where power adders, experimental and so on, but I want to get more def definitive answers on what the classes require. Definitely. It looks like they've got quite a few different combos there. Um, like you said, all the way from the blower cars down to like some pretty stock looking stuff. I saw some of the videos where they looked like they had some street, you know, diesel trucks and stuff. So seems like it's going to be a pretty cool event. And uh, like you said, Damien, we're definitely going to try to get in touch with them and get you guys a little bit more info because we like to bring some cool sand drag content. And obviously these are people that when they're not doing this hill climb stuff, let them go to sand drag racing. So we want to get exactly. you guys some cool Sand stuff. Sand Dragon Jason. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So definitely be looking up for that. Um, I know, uh, like I said, Elsa and being canceled. I'm going to have an off weekend this next weekend. So I'm going to be a little bit sad about that. Um, we will be getting you guys up photos from the previous Lake Elsa a race, which I still owe everyone. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Um, Isaac, any uh, last words, um, you know, your one thing for the weekend looking forward? Uh, my one thing, Ricky Thorpe, whoop, you're not the only guy that's got a set of Hoosiers, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> They're looking pretty good on there. They're looking pretty good. They Damien, will. <laughs> your one thing uh, for the week's leading ahead. Uh, all sorts of crazy stuff look to see some wild rides in the coming weeks whether it be from sanford north carolina where lee county Mo muddy motorsports park with the fastest of the fast whether it be monson with their insane hill climb that them cats put on or any other mud or sand drag events we can try and pull some coverage from because there's always racing going on there's a lot of racing throughout the middle of the country we still really haven't 
seen much of there's the U-turn mud racing you see out in Iowa. A lot of those guys go run Keys Peak and now are building faster 300 foot rails. Um, I've seen stuff from Montana that I don't really get much information on. And it's just insane what we see throughout the country that we're still missing. For sure. For sure. Definitely uh, room for us to grow. And if, uh, if you guys are looking to, to help us out, bring us some coverage, uh, join the team, be one of our correspondents so that we can get that action um, brought to more people. You know, we, that's what uh, the world in world sand drag news is all about. We're trying to get this whole giant sand dirt mud world all brought together. Um, my one thing um, is just uh, looking forward to finally getting back to some, some West coast action here. Uh, really, <laughs> Getting bummed out by not racing, so hopefully we're going to be able to do some of that in uh, Avenal in May. Um, for those of you that uh, are waiting on stuff, I'm going to just go and uh, plug Racing in Dirt once again. Uh, make sure you guys hit them up. They got all those uh, those needs from tires to to wheels and you know chassis and everything. So if you guys are waiting on some stuff uh, and you're looking to you know complete a build, hit them up. And uh, with that, that's going to go and wrap up a little bit shorter of an episode this week for Paddle Talk. We'll see you guys next week.